Good morning, everyone, and welcome to People's Church at Home Service. If you are joining us for the first time, kindly click on the link that is at the bottom right of the screen. And there, the first link is the digital welcome card. Just fill it out and send it back to us. We would love to get to know you better. My name is Goni Maswangani, and I have the honor today to take us through the service. So I'm not one to follow current events, but there are some things that happen in the world that just can't help but grab our attention. Two years ago in South Africa, it was the COVID-19 pandemic that had just landed. 
And boy, that was hard to miss. It turned our lives upside down. And in recent weeks, there has been talks about a war that is imminent in the middle of Europe. So this is a war in between big country Russia and its smaller neighboring country, Ukraine. This has caught the attention of the world because it is expected to have a hard impact that will send waves throughout the globe. So my point of interest in following has been in watching closely talks about allies with other nations. So small Ukraine has the support of the giant US of A and Russia has the backing or seemingly has the backing of big tech giant China. Everyone talks about their pros and cons. So who's got better weapons? Who's invested more in their military? And who could have more influence and have more power? Basically, who has an advantage and could possibly win the war? And will this turn into a world war? This reminded me of my own allies. When I find myself in a place of conflict, wondering, who are my allies? What, is my, what are my skill sets? What are my resources? Who is on my end? What advantages do I have against the enemy or any situation that I'm coming up against? And I found some encouragement in the daily devotional, the devotional reading from the 12th of February, citing Psalms chapter 42, verse 1 to 11, speaking of having hope in God. Verse 11 reads as follows, Why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become restless and disquieted in me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. And so, in the midst of a war, we weigh out our chances given the advantages that we have over the other side. Who is mightier, we might ask. Psalms 95 verse 3 and 4 says, For the Lord is a mighty God, a mighty King over all the gods. He rules over the whole earth from the deepest caves to the highest hills. Whose weapons are more powerful? The Bible says that none, zero, that are formed against us will prosper in Isaiah 54, verse 17. Who is more advanced, you wonder? In John chapter 1, verse 3, we read that God through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Ours is to write these promises on the tablets of our hearts so as to never lose heart, ever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity of being able to gather here in your name. We know that you're amongst us because your word assures us that where two or more are gathered in your name, you shall be amongst them. We know that you are a Lord who is not limited by time and space and therefore you are with us as we fellowship. Thank you, my King, for this opportunity to be able to come before your throne and be able to intercede, O oh God, for the nations that are currently at war. We pray for Ukraine, my King. We pray for world peace. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may send the Holy Spirit to minister into the hearts of leaders who have so much impact on the lives of their citizens, on the lives of even people beyond their borders, my Lord. We pray, O oh King, for world peace. We pray for a diplomatic spirit in this world, my Lord. For this is futile as we fight over power, as we fight over dominance, as we fight to be right. And it is so futile. It takes away, oh God, it takes away from so many lives. We pray, my King, that you may hear our prayer and that you may come down, oh God, into this situation. We pray, oh King, for the service ahead. We pray for the word that we will receive today. May it nourish our spirits and feed our souls, oh God, that we may be empowered by your truth and that we may be 
kindled by your love as we receive the promises that you have in store for us. For your word is active and it is alive. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that it is able to come through into our situations and come through into our hearts and create a shift in our lives. May we be hearers of the word and also be doers of the word. We thank you, my King, for everything that you have apportioned to us. In the name of Jesus, we praise you and we bless your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. your perfect grace that brought me to this place to share his love across the earth to glory of your holy grace so I stand before you God I lift my hand as you set me free and so
Good morning, church family. My name is Nkesane Matebula. I'll be sharing the offering message with you this morning, especially about what the Bible says about giving. The Bible is very clear when it comes to giving. This morning, I'm going to share four scriptures with you. All, all the four scriptures are taken from the NLT version. We'll first look at James 1, verse 17 which says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from our Father, who created all the lights in heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Then we go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 17. It says, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. The third scripture is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 16. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. The last scripture is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 17. All must give as they are able according to the blessings given to them by the Lord your God. Church, I don't know about you, but every Sunday before I leave my house for church, I prepare myself spiritually and mentally to receive the word without distraction. I even say a little prayer on that regard. Even as well as I'm busy with the preparation, I also plan ahead knowing that there will be time for offering. So I also plan on that and make sure that during that time, I am able to give what God has blessed me with. Because I come here to church with an understanding that the church has financial obligations and operational cost to be met on a day-to-day -day basis, if not monthly. This morning, church, I want to encourage you to be part of the winning team in God's kingdom. Like Pastor Anger said last Sunday, that we are generals in God's kingdom. I am sure all of us here would like to be part of the success of our church. May we not forget even in our personal life to give to those who are in need. Can we have a heart to assist where we can? It can be our family member, our neighbors, or even the community at large. Sometimes the best gift you can give is your time speaking kind words, and being gentle. May we be blessers in God's kingdom at all times. Can we bow our heads and pray? Lord, we bring our offerings to you this morning with open and cheerful hearts. Thank you for the material and financial blessings that you have given us. We thank you that you are our light and may you continue to order our steps even during hard times. Lead us by your spirit and word as we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. Welcome back to People's Church News. And here's what's happening in the life of the church. Good morning, church. My name is Dikele Dimukhobe. I'm an Ignite volunteer. We would like to invite anybody who is interested to be part of impacting young lives in a godly manner every Sunday morning. Whoever is interested can contact Dudu or you can come to me. Thank you very much. On the 13th of March 2022, we are having Vision Sunday. More information will follow regarding this matter. On Tuesdays, we have dawn prayer between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. Use the WhatsApp number below the screen to join. Later on the same day, there's a reflect from 6 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. If you are a young adult in your 20s, kindly join us every Tuesday and let's have a godly party and do life together. 
Let us come together as a family for our prayer meeting every Wednesday evening from 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. And on Fridays, we have designed, which is our youth ministry that caters for young people between the grades 8 and 12. Designed, it takes place on every Friday evening from 6.30 until 8 p.m. Grace us with your presence for intercessory prayer every Sunday morning at half past eight. Let us stand in the gap, pray and intercede for all people and give thanks for them. This will be followed by the main service at 9 a.m. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are at People's Church PLK on Facebook and YouTube. The church has a WhatsApp number. For those who would like to receive announcements, kindly save the number on the screen. Text your name and surname if you have not done so. And after the service, there will be refreshments in the tea garden. Stay blessed and enjoy the rest of the service. And that was the update on what is taking place in our church this week. And now we will receive a word, a preach from our senior pastor, Pastor Elijah Matango. Enjoy. People's Church, I greet you in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is that not wonderful to find ourselves this morning in the house of the Lord. Unbelievable. Today is the last Sunday of the month of February. Usually we use the two months, January and February, to prepare ourselves for the year ahead. This is exactly what we have done done we have heard in january are 21 days of prayer and fasting spiritually we are ready to surge ahead this year but also the nature of our messages january and part of february was to inspire us to encourage us in view of the year that lies ahead of us today i just wish to close the two months january and february with an appropriate message for today and i want to believe that after this message your preparedness will be unquestionable i am reading a well-known portion of scripture reading in Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 but this particular pericope can be read alongside Deuteronomy 31 verses 1 and 6 but I'm not going to read the letter I'm only going to read Joshua 1 from verse 1 to verse 9 well-known portion of scripture after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses 8, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Li to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful whenever you go wherever you go keep this book of the law always on your lips 
meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go brothers and sisters I have decided this morning to give the title, the theme of our message is Failure is no option. Outrageously courageous. Failure is no option. To us as the church, to us as Christians, Failure is no option. Outrageously courageous. I have borrowed the first part of this title from the famous words uttered by Jean Grants in April 1970. And this is an American expression, failure is no option. But where does it come from? On the 11th of April, 1970, the American Space Administration, NASA, launched Apollo 13. Two days after its launch, part of it exploded. This led to the loss of oxygen, electrical power, and other important systems. The crew of the three men had to be transferred to another space shuttle called the Aquarius. Aquarius. The crew of the three men had to be transferred to another space shuttle called the Aquarius. What was worse was that the capacity of the mission to return to Earth was very much limited. At some point, the staff of the mission control in Houston, Texas, began to admit defeat. They thought there was no way the astronauts will reach Earth safe. The mission control director, Gene Grants, made the famous statements which instilled such courage in other staff members. And for that reason, they never gave up. He said, failure to bring our astronauts home alive is not an option. Indeed, on the 17th, April 1970, the Aquarius entered Earth space and the three astronauts landed safely. Therefore, the first part of this title Failure is not an option, was an inspiration to the control team. They will do everything in their might to bring the astronauts back safe. Indeed, I want to use this title, especially the first part of this title, to inspire us that as Christians, in our lives, in our endeavors, but indeed as the church, as we continue, as we go ahead this year, failure is not an option. Now, the second part of the title, outrageously courageous, I've taken this part this part of the title from the text that I read. Now, the first text that I read in Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 9, God speaks to Joshua after the death of Moses. But the other text that I referred to, Deuteronomy 31, from verse 1 to 6, Moses is addressing Joshua and the children of Israel. And the content of the address, the content of the message is clear. You are not going to fail. 
Failure is no option. You ought to be outrageously courageous. But what is to be outrageously courageous? It is the word courageous means to be extremely brave. And putting the words together, the two words together, outrageously courageous means to be extremely brave in such a way that you will be undeterred by any obstacle that comes your way. In other words, a person who is outrageously courageous, they are brave and there is nothing that can deter them. I pray today that we should be inspired so that nothing will deter us in our lives, in our mission, in what God has called us to do. When you read the text that I read to you, there are so many points that we can extrapolate from it. Subtitles such as Moses is dead. The mark of the blood. This is your season. You will possess the land. I will be with you. Be strong. Be courageous. The book of the law should not depart from your mouth. Now, there's no way that we can preach all the subtitles. Now, those that I've marked in red on the slide, these are the ones that I wish to develop in this message. The first one, in order for you to be outrageously courageous, God tells Moses, verses 1 and 2, Joshua chapter 1, after the death of Moses, God appears to Joshua and he tells him, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, arise, lead these people to the land I am giving you. Now, God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, didn't Joshua know that? He knew very well that Moses is dead. But you know what? God doesn't say anything without a cause. Now, God is correcting something in the mind of Joshua. Why should God tell him the obvious? Why should God tell him that Moses is dead? Yes, he knew. He has mourned him. Moses is dead. But I believe that God is correcting the way of thinking of Joshua at this particular time. God is saying to him, if you have to lead this people successfully to the promised land, you must quit the second lieutenant mentality. You are no longer the second in command, but you are now in charge. The mind that was lingering at the grief of the death of Moses. Maybe Joshua would think, oh, I wonder what Moses would do in this situation. Forget it. Moses, my servant, is dead. God abruptly disturbs the backward focus of Joshua. Never to look back. But it is time to go ahead. God simply says, 
you will not reach the promised land if you still cherish that mentality. You will not succeed. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, the first thing that we learn from this theme, from this title, from this text, is that if we are to make it this year, if we are to make it in our lives, we have got to quit the mentality of focusing on our past. Some of us are still hounded by childhood experiences, teenage, young adult, bad decisions. Moses, my servant, is dead. If we are to make it, we have got to quit thinking about the past. The past failures, the past mistakes, the past bad decisions. Moses, my servant, is dead. This is your season. This is your time. Quit comparing yourselves with any other person. You are not Moses. You are Joshua. I have called you. I have known you. Quit thinking about the past. May God help us if we wish to continue and to be successful, we ought to be outrageously courageous by focusing not on our past, but on our future. The second point that I have highlighted, very much interesting. Joshua, you have the mark of the blood. What does that mean? Numbers 13. We are introduced to Joshua. He was the firstborn son of man. Now, we remember in Egypt that the angel was coming, sent by God, to kill all the firstborns of human beings and animals. So potentially, Joshua was to die because he was the firstborn. In that household. But the only difference was that. God tells. God instructs. Moses. To tell the children of Israel. That they should kill an animal. A lamb. And take the blood. And apply it on the doorpost. For at night. The angel of death will come. Will appear. And kill all. All the firstborns of the Egyptians. But when the angel comes, when he sees the blood, he will pass over those households. The angel passed over the household, the house of Joshua's father. And Joshua, as the firstborn, was saved from death because of the mark of the blood. So Joshua, you were saved by the mark of the blood. Thank God for the mark of the blood. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 1 verse 18, you have not been saved. You have not been redeemed by perishable things such as gold and silver, but by the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank God about the mark of the blood. It is because of the mark of the blood that Joshua was saved. It is because of the mark of the blood that we are saved. Thank God for the work that Jesus did for us on the cross. And indeed, the mark of the blood of the Lamb will never leave us. John Wesley, great evangelist, was returning home from a service one night. And he was robbed by a thief. And this thief took money from him. And as he was going away, 
John Wesley said, my friend, don't go away. I have still something to give to you. A witness. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. You might have taken money from me, but one thing you can take away from me also is that Jesus is the Savior. You need to have the mark of the blood in your life. The robber just disappeared. Years later, John Wesley was greeting people after a service when he was approached by a stranger. What a surprise to learn that this visitor, now a believer in Christ, also a successful businessman, was the one who robbed him that evening. And he said, I owe it to you, sir. My life has been transformed by what you said. Never escaped my mind the mark of the blood. Oh no, my friend, John Wesley exclaimed, not me, but to the precious blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Thank God about the mark of the blood. The mark of the blood is upon us. It is the mark of the blood that will make us succeed. It is the mark of the blood that will protect us. It is the mark of the blood that will give us access where there is no way. Praise the name of the Lord. Failure is no option because of the mark of the blood. The mark of the blood of Jesus Christ. The third and my final point Verse 5, God says to Joshua, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God says to Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake forsake you in other words God is saying to Joshua you will not face this task alone you will not face your future alone I will be with you Moses was the predecessor of Joshua Joshua learned a lot from Moses 40 years of wilderness wandering he has seen the nation's unbelief sin rebellion the mistakes of Moses you are also vulnerable you are not perfect but God says I will be with you you will not be alone I will never leave you nor forsake you brethren People's church, failure is no option because we are not alone. The task that God has given us, where we are taking the church to another level, where we are taking the church, what God has given us to do, we are not going to fail. Not in our own strength or abilities, but He has promised us. He will be with us. As a result, we are going to be outrageously courageous. God with us. In conclusion, just wish to refer to one point. God says to Joshua, you will possess the land. And this is found in verses 3 to verse of Joshua chapter 1 every place that I promise to your ancestors Abraham Isaac and Jacob you are going to inherit the promised land in other words to us as the church to us as Christians today let us believe to that what God has promised us, 
what God has said to us, we will achieve. It is going to happen. But you know what? When Joshua and Caleb went to explore the land, to spy the land, they saw the land flowing milk and honey. This is the land, the fruit. But the land is inhabited amongst others by giants, the sons of Anak. In other words, what we are going to achieve this year, it's not going to come on our lap, fall on our lap. We are going to fight. We are going to be victorious. You know, when you read the land that God promised to Abraham, Isaac, exactly what is written in verses 3 and 4, what it says to us is that whatever God has promised us this year, it's going to be fulfilled. It's going to be ours. Yes, in the case of the Israelites, it is referring to physical land, Palestine, Canaan. But to us, it's not only physical thing. Yes, it is inclusive. But praise the name of the Lord. Even in the spiritual realm, we are going to be successful. We are going to do exploits in the name of Jesus. People's church to us, 2022, failure is no option. To your life, to your family, failure is no option because we are outrageously courageous in the name of Jesus let me pray over your life let me pray for you and indeed Joshua and the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan into the other side they inherited the land that God promised to their ancestors let me pray for you today in the name of Jesus Jesus. Father, we come to you. We thank you. You have been with us this year. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful promises that you have made to us as we read your word. We believe in what you say to us. We pray for our lives. We pray whatever things we are going to encounter this year we are going to make it for you are with us in the name of jesus we have prayed amen and amen praise the name of the lord you have watched you have listened to yet another production of people's church is that not wonderful that god has spoken to you today god has spoken into your heart into your life into your situation and circumstances wonderful to have this production but is that not better for you to join us in our physical service the address and all the particulars of our church and our services are appearing on the screen please including a telephone number where you should phone contact us if you have some needs you wish to share with us do that god richly bless you till we meet the next time either physically or on this platform